respiratory failure respiratory failure occurs when gas exchange is inadequate resulting in hypoxia it is defined as low po2 and can be divided into two sub type according to uh, pco2 levels it could be type 1 respiratory failure and type 2 respiratory failure so respiratory failure is the inability of the lung to meet the metabolic demands of the body and this can be found from failure of tissue oxygenation or failure of co2 homeostasis respiration uh, is a gas exchange between the organism and its environment the function of respiratory system is to transfer oxygen from the atmosphere to the blood and remove co2 from the body respiratory failure is defined as uh, po2 of less than 8 mm of mercury or less than 8 kPa while breathing air or CO2 of more than 50 mm of mercury so the respiratory system um, includes uh, the lung uh, upper airway bronchial tree alveoli and there is a control by the cns medulla and the central nervous system including the and the peripheral nervous system including the phrenic nerve respiratory muscle and chest wall which all makes a mechanical um, and uh, nervous control of respiratory system so the type 1 respiratory failure is when the po2 is less than 60 mm of mercury or uh, less than 8 kPa or low pco2 or normal or high ph most commonly found with uh, is a most commonly found of respiratory failure the lung disease uh, is severe to interfere with the pulmonary oxygen exchange but overall the ventilation is maintained physiologic causes including the ventilatory uh, vq mismatch and shunt which could be caused by pneumonia pulmonary edema pe asthma emphysema fibrosing alveolitis and ards ARDS is one of the common causes of uh, type 1 respiratory failure so hypoxemic respiratory failure causes of arterial hypoxemia is low fio2 hypoventilation which causes increase in pco2 vq mismatch as for example copd diffusion limitation intrapulmonary shunting pneumonia atelectasis chf ards low pressure so the hypoxemic respiratory failure is caused by disorder of heart lung or blood etiology is easier to assess by chest x ray abnormality normal chest x ray if the cardiac shunting is present right to left asthma copd and pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism can give a um, wedge shaped infarct or can be inconclusive a radiological finding we can see pulmonary infiltrate on chest x ray which could be a uh, common in the cases of atelectasis and pneumonia in pneumonia you can see different uh, types of consolidation it could be um, patchy consolidation and uh, a low bar consolidation whereas atelectasis uh, means a collapse and is defined by a reduced infiltration of all or part of the lung it can affect the whole lung or it can be a low bar segmental or subsegmental it is caused by reabsorption of distal air following the proximal airway obstruction and the endobronchial tumor inhaled foreign body mucus plugging The linear atelectasis is a common form of subsegmental atelectasis which is often an incidental finding but can occur in acute infection or in pulmonary infarction. An atelectasis affects a larger volume of tissue such as a lobe collapsed lung is of increased density and the salivate part of the mediastinal controls of diaphragm. In in this case there is also the evidence of volume lossing and displacement of the fissure towards the collapsed lobe. this displacement of the hilum towards the collapsed lobe decreased vessel count in the remaining aerated lung crowding of the ribs and elevated hemidiaphragm
Diffuse infiltrate can also be seen in cardiogenic pulmonary edema and uh, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema which included the ARDS. In ARDS, the radiological features of acute respiratory distress syndrome uh, include the interstitial pulmonary edema which is caused by disruption of alveolar membrane and protein-rich fluid in infiltrates into the alveoli which become disrupted and subsequently collapse. The main features are of widespread bilateral multifocal ill-defined opacities uh, which uh, progresses to widespread confluent consolidation as the changes uh, these usually stabilize after the few days and further focal opacification arises and the possibility of the superadded infection or infarction. The ARDS may be asymmetric in patients who have undergone a lobectomy and uh, with less severe uh, changes in aerated lung. In cardiogenic pulmonary edema, uh, it can be distinguished from ARDS and the cardiogenic pulmonary edema, uh, sometimes difficult to differentiate, but uh, there are some features. Uh, the onset of radiological uh, changes occur in 12 hours after the symptoms and in cardiogenic pulmonary edema you can see uh, the radiological features uh, are common with this uh, onset of symptom. In ARDS the consolidation is widespread and patchy. In cardiogenic pulmonary edema it's perihilar. The septal lines are unusual but it is common in uh, pulmonary ed edema and uncommon in ARDS. Air bronchiogram is common in ARDS and uh, uncommon in cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Pleural effusion is not common with ARDS but can be seen with cardiogenic pulmonary edema. And with the progression, uh, the ARDS is static and cardiogenic pulmonary edema you can see rapid dynamic changes on the chest x-ray. In interstitial pneumonitis or fibrosis, you will see um, the fibrosing uh, uh, pattern uh, in different part of the lung. Infections could be pneumonia, it could be bacterial pneumonia, it could be a viral pneumonia. Bacterial pneumonia are bro uh, broadly classified radiologically into bronchopneumonia and lobar pneumonia. Bronchopneumonia where the inflammation is centered on the larger airways and causes bronchial wall thickening or pacification of the SNI caused by the nodular pattern, volume, loss and no air bronchiograms. Lobar pneumonia where the inflammation begins distally and is spread to cause homogeneous consolidation that may involve the entire lobe. The air bronchiograms are usually visible but there is often minimal volume loss. Pneumonic consolidations has the same radiologic density as often the tissue and will obscure the mediastinal contour of diaphragm if abutting them and this is known as cellulite sign. The anatomical location of the consolidation can therefore be determined and dependent upon which part of the contours are obscured. So we, you can see the uh, cellulite, uh, so it could be like uh, along the mediastinum, upper lobes, heart border, middle lobes and lingula, diaphragm, lower lobes. The underlying emphysema may also cause uh, focal lucencies within the consolidation and should not be confused with cavitation. The comparison with previous imaging, either chest radiograph or CT scans if av available, uh, can be done and compared. The type 2 respiratory failure. It can be seen uh, with the retention of uh, CO2 and uh, PO2 is al always uh, low, PCO2 can be more than uh, 6 kPa and it is caused by alveolar hyper hypoventilation with or without a VQ mismatch. So hypoxia is always present, pH uh, depends on the level of bicarbonate, bicarbonate depends on duration of hypercapnia and renal response occur over uh, days to weeks. So it could be acute uh, arterial pH is uh, low and the causes could be pulmonary, it, uh, respiratory drive, neuromuscular disease and thoracic wall disease. The pulmonary disease could be asthma, COPD, 
pneumonia, pulmonary fibrosis, uh, obstructive sleep apnea, and a reduced respiratory drive occurs in sedative lung CNS tumor and uh, trauma, neuromuscular disease, cervical cord lesion, diaphragmatic paralysis, poliomyelitis, myasthenia gravis, and GB syndrome, thoracic wall disease like flail, chest, kyphoid scoliosis. So acute and chronic, this occurs in patients with chronic uh, CO2 retention but who has worsened and have high rising CO2 and low pH mechanism in this include the respiratory muscle fatigue uh, like myasthenia. So the uh, lesion can uh, lie in respiratory center like medullary dysfunction, drug overdose, CVA, tumors, hypothyroidism and uh, neuromuscular disease like GB syndrome, chest wall and pleural disease, upper airway obstruction, foreign body, laryngeal edema, and peripheral uh, air disorder. So uh, the clinical and laboratory tests can be done. The patients need to be examined and those with the underlying uh, disorder pro uh, along with symptoms and signs of hypoxia with or without hypercapnia. Hypoxia, so the uh, in hypoxia there is dyspnea, restlessness, agitation, confusion, central cyanosis if long standing hypoxia, polycythemia, pulmonary hypertension and call pulmonale. And uh, in hypercapnia there may be headache, peripheral vasodilatation, tachycardia, bounding pulse, tremor, flaps, papilledema, confusion, drowsiness and coma. So one must do uh, FBC, UNE, CRP and ABG and ABG is very important uh, in these conditions, it's pyrometry for COPD, neuromuscular disease, GB syndrome. So ABG must be done uh, whenever there is unexpected deterioration or illness in the patient, anyone with ac acute uh, exacerbation of the symptoms and with impaired consciousness and impaired respiratory effort. And uh, when we see the signs and symptoms of bounding pulse, uh, drowsy, tremors, headache, pink palms, papilledema, which are the signs of the CO2 retention or cyanosis, confusion, visual hallucination, which are the signs of hypoxia. And it could be done to monitor the progress of critically ill patient with a known respiratory failure, anyone in ITU, surgery and trauma. The pulse oximetry is also added and it is critical to know the CO2 along with pulse oximetry and periodic uh, blood gas checks should be done. And the chest x-ray uh, should be performed, microbiology, sputum and blood cultures in the spirometry should be done especially for COPD, neuromuscular disease and GB uh, syndrome. So uh, when there is a cyanosis, there is a bluish discoloration of the mucous membrane, skin and indicates the hypoxemia, an oxygenated hemoglobin of 50 mg per liter and is a not non-sensitive in indicator as there are various different causes of peripheral cyanosis. Patient could have dyspnea secondary to hypercapnia, hypoxemia, paradoxical bleeding, confusion, somnolence and coma and convulsions. <clears throat> Assessment is done by the uh, careful uh, clinical history, physical examination, ABG and classify the respiratory failure with the help of the cause PO2, uh, VCO2 divided by VA into 0.836 and, uh, and uh, PA minus AO2 is equal to PIO2 minus PCO2 divided by R minus PAO2 lung functions should be performed, chest radiograph and ECG. So the, we can see the circulatory changes, polycythemia and pulmonary hypertension called pulmonale on right ventricular failure. So the management uh, of the respiratory failure, the principles are hypoxemia, which may cause death in respiratory failure, primary obstructive, 
objective is to reverse and prevent hypoxemia secondary objective is to control the pco2 and respiratory acidosis the treatment of underlying disease and the patient's cns and cvs must be monitored and treated throughout So one has to treat the underlying disease, uh, give the oxygen therapy, 35 to 60 percent with the face mask to correct <coughs> hypoxia. Assisted ventilation, PO2 is less than 8 kPa, despite uh, 60 percent oxygen. So the titration should be done, monitoring the levels, and the goal is to prevent the tissue hypoxia. Tissue hypoxia occurs with abnormal hemoglobin and abnormal cardiac output venous po2 is less than 20 or oxygen saturation is less than 40 percent arterial po2 is less than 38 millimeter mercury or oxygen saturation of less than 70 percent increase arterial po2 to 60 millimeters of mercury or oxygen saturation to 90 percent or venous sats more than 60 percent oxygen dose either flow rate liters per minute or fio2 Oxygen therapy can give the oxygen toxicity and very high levels of CNS toxicity and scissors and low levels and longer exposure, capillary damage, leak, pulmonary fibrosis, PO2, more than 150 can cause retrolental fibroplasia in, in the in newborns, FiO2 of 35 to 40 percent can be safely tolerated indefinitely. Uh, CO2 narcosis, PO2 may increase to the cause of respiratory acidosis, somnolence and coma, PaCO2, increased secondary to combination of evolution of hypoxic drive to breathe, increase in dead space. In case of respiratory failure, the center may be relatively insensitive to CO2 and the respiration could be driven by hypoxia. Oxygen therapy should be given with care, nevertheless do not leave hypoxia untreated, treat the underlying cause control oxygen therapy start 24 percent of uh, o2 recheck abg every 20 minutes and pocu2 is steady or lower increase po2 concentration to 28 uh, percent pacu2 has risen to 1.5 kpa and the patient is still hypoxic con uh, consider respiratory stimulant like uh, doxapram 1.5 to 4 mg per minute and assisted ventilation and if this fails, consider intubation and ventilation when appropriate. The mechanical ventilation is a, it's a non-invasive uh, with mask, invasive with endobronchial tube. Mechanical ventilation can be volume or pressure cycle um, for hypercapnia. MV increases uh, the mechanical ventilation, increases the alveolar ventilation and lowers PCO2 and corrects pH and resists fatigue respiratory muscles for hypoxemia. Oxygen therapy alone does not correct hypoxemia caused by shunt and most common causes of shunt is fluid filled or collapsed alveoli and pulmonary edema. PEEP increases the end expiratory lung volume FRC PEEP uh, recircuits to collapse alveoli and prevents uh, recollapse FRC increases and therefore lung becomes more compliant reversal of atelectasis diminish the intrapulmonary shunt and excessive PEEP has adverse effect decrease cardiac output paratrauma increase physiologic dead space increase work of brain Pulmonary edema is uh, extravascular lung water, in interstitial edema does not impair the lung function and the alveolar edema causes uh, several gas exchange abnormalities. Movement of fluid is governed by uh, Starling equation and the Starling forces govern the movement of water and solutes across the capillary membranes and are principally controlled by hydrostatic forces which represent the pressure within the vessel or the interstitial tissues and tend to push the fluid out. The osmotic forces which represent the action of plasma protein that tends to pull fluid into the vessels or interstitial tissues. In combination with uh, these forces, the fluid movement is also dependent upon the capillary permeability and the surface area of the capillaries and lymph flow. The net filtration pressure represents the difference between the hydrostatic pressure and the net osmotic pressure.
the fluid tends to leave the arterial end of the capillary as the hydrostatic, uh, hydrostatic pressure exceeds the net osmotic pressure the fluid tends to re-enter the venous end of capillary as the net osmosis pressure exceeds the hydrostatic pressure as the mean capillary hydrostatic pressure is 8 millimeters and the net filtration pressure is minus 17 in the pulmonary vasculature there is no net filtration in the pulmonary capillaries only the net absorption so in pulmonary edema uh, which is defined as the accumulation of fluid in the alveoli and lung parenchyma resulting in the impaired gas exchange pulmonary edema can be classified into cardiogenic secondary to left ventricular failure non cardiogenic secondary to direct lung injury pneumonia inhalation injury smoke ammonia chlorine trauma pulmonary contusion aspiration re expansion indirect injury sepsis cardiopulmonary bypass multiple blood transfusion pulmonary edema develops when there is a net movement of fluid from the blood vessels into the interstitial spaces and in some cases and instances to alveoli it can be divided into three stages increase net filtration pressure but uh, the stage one uh, is uh, uh, where there is increased uh, filtration pressure or endothelial permeability but accompanied by an equal increase in lymphatic drainage resulting in no uh, net change in the interstitial volume the stage 2 fluid begins to accumulate around the bronchioles arterioles and venules secondary to the failure of lymphatic to compensate the increased filtration pressure uh, stage 3 the fluid begins to accumulate in the less compliant compartments of the interstitial spaces accompanied by disruption of alveolar capillary membrane and, and alveolar uh, flooding. The alveolar obliteration decreases the pulmonary oxygenation and resulting in hypoxia, deterioration of the left ventricular function and increase in end diastolic pressure. The subsequent venous and arterial pulmonary hypertension further increases the hydrostatic pressure. So. So what can we see on the X-ray? Um, so we can see the airspace opacification due to edema. Uh, we can see uh, septal lines, uh, which are the characteristic of pulmonary edema, which represent the leakage of fluid into the interlobular septa, which measure approximately one centimeter in length, and uh, there is lung uh, in the lung periphery, peri perpendicular and extending to pleural surface and more frequently in the lung basis. The deep septal lines measure approximately 4 cm and radiate to hyla. Peribronchial thickening uh, which is seen in the as parallel linear shadows in the uh, ring shadows and dependent upon whether the bronchi or peribronchial and uh, or into the plane of radiograph, the walls of the bronchi are often indefined. The subpleural edema, which is caused by the interstitial fluid accumulating beneath the visceral pleura, are sometimes ter termed as laminar effusion. It may mimic the pleural effusion, and lateral costophrenic angle remains sharp. And there can be uh, perihilar haze, uh, which is a subtle sign and is often identified with comparison of previous films. Uh, the uh, alveolar edema, which is characteristic of of bilateral perihilar uh, edema, although the shadowing may be patchy or uh, or e it could be a unilateral thing. Supporting features such as pleural effusion, subtle lines, and uh, are helpful in reaching the diagnosis but it may be absent and the most useful diagnostic feature is a rapid response to treatment even with hours the improvement is much faster uh, than uh, that is seen with other causes of bilateral consolidation it can be seen in uh, hemorrhagic hemorrhage or in infection So a variety of unrelated uh, massive insults uh, injure the uh, gas exchange surface of the lung and uh, 
the clinical terms is uh, often synonymous with uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, capillary leak syndrome, shock lung, adult hyaline membrane disease. Risk factors include sepsis, cardiopulmonary bypass, transfusion, severe pneumonia, aspiration, fractures, um, especially long bones, intravascular coagulopathy. So, ARDS is a respiratory failure uh, with refractory hypoxemia due to decreased lung compliance and uh, cardiogenic and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema with uh, PaCO2 and FiO2 ratio of uh, less than 200. The pathogenesis is thought to be dependent on endothelial injury. Common triggers include sepsis, pneumonia, aspiration, multiple blood transfusion, inhaled ingested toxins, trauma, overall mortality is 30 to 40 percent. Present with acute onset of 12 to 48 hours, tachypnea, dyspnea, tachycardia, fever, cyanosis, labored breathing, diffuse high pitch rails, hypoxemia and settings of one or uh, of the systemic inflammatory causes or exposure of additional findings as follows phase 1 acute injury normal physical examination possible respiratory alkalosis phase 2 6 to 8 hours hyperventilation hypercapnia widening of aa gradient phase 3 is the acute respiratory failure tachypnea dyspnea decreased lung compliance scattered rails and diffuse chest opacity on chest x-ray phase 4 is severe hypoxemia responsive to therapy Increase interpulmonary shunting, metabolic and respiratory acidosis. So, usually diagnosed by um, acute onset of respiratory di distress, uh, PaO2 FiO2 ratio of less than 200, and bilateral pulmonary infiltrate on chest x ray. So, so the criteria for diagnosis, including the pulmonary edema or non-pulmonary shock, uh, multi-systemic trauma, exclude chronic pulmonary disease, left ventricular failure, and uh, must have respiratory distress, tachypnea more than 20 beats per minute, labored breathing, central cyanosis, diffuse infiltrate on chest x-ray, PO2 less than 40, FiO2 of greater than 0.6, compliance of less than 50 ml per centimeter of water, increased shunt and dead base. So manage <coughs> with mechanical ventilation with low tidal volumes to minimize the ventilatory, induce lung injury, treat the underlying disease and maintain the adequate perfusion to prevent and organ damage, use PEEP to recircuit collapse alveoli and titrate PEEP and FIO2 to achieve adequate oxygenation. Call of oxygenation is PO2 of more than 60 or SAO2 of more than 90 or FIO2 of less than 0.6, slowly wean patient from ventilator and follow extubation trials.